Hello, and today I'm going to be sharing with you some tips and advice on how you can have a good experience while you're well camping, how you can pick some places to stay free legally, and some of them have even got some facilities. I'm going to be giving you a giveaway with something which is absolutely brilliant, I think, and also a huge tip which could keep you out of trouble. So let's get on with it. With a growing number of van lifers, which has significantly increased over the recent years, it's inevitable that there's going to be some of these which are not really abiding by the laws, causing a bit of trouble for others, just inconsiderate and disrespectful. And what this is doing, this is just infuriating locals of these places which people are going to visit. And there's actually been several occurrences which have been reported of damage to vehicles, vehicles being egged, baked beans on the windscreen, even vans being damaged and people occupants within them actually being attacked. And we just need to make sure that we're doing all we can to ensure that we prevent these things from happening. The irresponsibility and disrespect which is being shown by the minority can actually have a negative effect on the rest of us. People will just see a van and think they're exactly the same as the people who were here last week and that just isn't right. So how, what can we do to make sure that we give ourselves that best chance of having that best experience? Let's get on to number one. First, you need to choose your stopping place wisely. You don't want to be causing a disruption to others. You don't want to be parking in front of people's houses. You don't want to be blocking driveways. You don't want to be parking in front of farmers' gates. Yeah, it might sound crazy, but I have actually seen it happen. Don't be blocking people's views. Residential areas, some might say, well, you're not going to wild camp in a residential area but a lot of stealth campers do, and I do know that a lot of people do do it. I've actually known people spend many a time in London and some of the bigger cities because it's much cheaper just taking your van up there and parking it up rather than staying in a hotel. But just make sure that you know what's around in the surroundings. <laughs> I mean, even in Plymouth, the other week I was traveling back, it was something like four o'clock in the morning, and I went past this very place, which I'm showing you now, and there was a T6 camper van with the pop top roof up you know it's just off the main road i mean this is i mean partly yes it's fine because it isn't blocking anybody's views it's not directly in front of the front of houses nobody's really going to see them apart from everybody driving down the main road and actually it was illegal because it was on double yellow lines just think carefully before you actually park up your vehicle and set up camp for the night number two arrive late and leave early. It's a good idea to arrive as late as you possibly can and then leave as early as you possibly can the next day. The less time you're there, the less chances you are of being seen and the less chances are you are of going to be annoying somebody unless you park where I'm going to tell you later on. Tip number three, only stay for one night. Do not overstay your welcome. The locals might tolerate you for one night but if you, especially if you're in a high tourist area, they're not going to want you staying there for more than one night. They're going to be seeing lots and lots of vans. Don't overstay your welcome. And also stay, try and stay to the confines of your van. Don't be pulling out your great big horn and setting out your camp, your windbreak, your chairs, your fire pit, things like that. Don't do it. Just stay as compact as possible within your confines of your vehicle, especially overnight. Everything needs to be in your van overnight. You don't want to be leaving things out, uh, especially if you are in one of these high tourist areas. There is a very good possibility that somebody might come along, be annoyed, and, or even just potentially steal some of your stuff. So one night and move on. Number four, park alone. There's nothing around me. And this is the best thing to do. Locals might tolerate one van, but if there's two, three, or even more, that's just gonna raise alarm bells and they're not gonna like multiple vehicles arriving. So make sure you park alone with nobody else around. If somebody else pulls up, you move on. If there's somebody where you want to stay, you move on, park alone. Number five. Now this might seem obvious or it might seem a bit, well, why do we have to do that? But that's keep quiet. Don't play your music ridiculously loud or watch your favourite TV or movies, whatever you're watching in your van. Just keep the volume down. 
When I say it might seem a little bit silly, well, if you are out in the middle of the countryside and there's nobody around, then nobody can hear you. You'd be surprised actually how far sound can travel, especially in a nice, peaceful, tranquil area such as this, where I am now. Keep quiet, keep your music down, listen to it at a respectable level. You want to go under the radar as much as you possibly can. You should just turn it down and you can still enjoy it. Number six, barbecues and fire pits. Not ideal when you're wild camping. People don't like fires and barbecues, especially in the wild. There's been a lot of damage caused uh, over the summer months. Locally around here on Dartmoor, there's been quite a lot of wildfires on there, which have been started by barbecues and fire pits and people just being disrespectful or just not knowing really what they're doing. The sign's gone up in a lot of places on Dartmoor now. Don't do it. If you cause damage, like I discussed in my last video, you could be getting yourself into trouble. So just think on, try and cook on a Kadak or something similar to that. You don't be needing your fire pits and things like that. Save them for another time. Or if you get yourself a proper pitch somewhere, maybe they will allow you to have a fire pit or a barbecue. Barbecue is also called damage on grass, which isn't good. Number seven, goes without saying really, leave no trace, leave nothing behind. Take your rubbish with you. You don't want to be leaving your rubbish around. You don't want anybody to know that you've been there. Leave no trace. As the famous saying goes, is it famous? Don't really know if it's famous or not, but leave nothing but footprints, take nothing but photos. Simple motto. Number eight, make sure you're self-contained. And what I mean by this is toilet facilities. Nobody, nobody wants you doing your business out in the wild where potentially locals, children, people like that can find it. Take your own toilet. You know, if you've got a van, you've got space. Hopefully you've got a toilet in there. Put your toilet in your van, take it with you. Make sure you've got the chemicals to dispose of it properly and disposing of it properly. I'm going to give you an option for that later on, but make sure you dispose of it properly. Number nine. So you've got your cooking facilities, you've got your hob in here. You might have your Kadak as well and bits and pieces like that. So you've already got what you need to actually cook, but it is actually a really good idea to try and support the local economy. Go and buy produce, go and buy some local produce. If you're wanting to cook on your, your stoves, go and go to the farm shop, buy some meat or some vegetables from the local farm shop, support the economy, eat in the cafes and restaurants, go and just have a drink. Just show a little bit of support. It'll go a long way with the locals rather than them thinking you're just there to enjoy their land, their bit of countryside. Go and support it a bit. Stick a few quid in there. You'd be surprised how well it'll go down. Number 10, and before my advice, on how to get the best places to stay and also the giveaway coming up number 10 should really be number one it is so important hugely hugely important tip unless you are 100 percent sure that the place in which you've parked you're not going to be moved on so you've either paid for a camping spot or you've done something which i'm going to be coming on to in a minute if you've just wild camped, you've stealth camped, you've parked somewhere where you could be moved on, do not drink alcohol. If you are asked to move, if the police come along and ask you to move on because you've parked inappropriately, you've parked somewhere where you shouldn't, you've been asked to move on, don't drink alcohol. You could get done for drink driving and obviously we know what the consequences of that, that are. So unless you are 100% certain you're not going to be moved on, do not drink alcohol. You've got your nice fridge stacked up with the drinks which you need. If you're parking somewhere, you could be moved on. Keep it to soft drinks. Don't drink alcohol. It isn't going to be worth it. So how do you find a good place to stay? The answer, Brit stops. This is fantastic. This is a book but not only a book, it's also an app now where it contains over 1,100 places for you to stay. 
you can go there. It contains uh, England, Scotland, Wales, Ireland, Northern Ireland. It covers the entire of the UK and it's brilliant. There's some fantastic stops in here. There's also a Facebook group which you can actually join. Even if you've not actually got the book, you can join and have a look. Some of the photos are on there, absolutely fantastic. Not under the countryside and places that people have visited, but also some of the food in the pubs and restaurants, which are the actual stops in the book. Really can highly, highly recommend it. It isn't just general public car parks, it's pubs, cafes, restaurants, vineyards, breweries. Yes, breweries, farm shops, pick your own fruit, garden centers, dairies. There's even a parachute center. There's lots of different places to stay. You can plan your break away, wherever it is in the, the UK, with the book and not worry about mo being moved on because you've got the landowner's permission with the book. Now, I can't show you the places within the book because that's one of the things. You buy the book and effectively, this is your ticket to be able to stay in these car parks and other places for free. So in the book, and I can show you this page, there's a key and it shows you what the type of establishment is, whether there's going to be any size restrictions on your vehicle, whether you need to phone ahead to let them know that you come in, or if there's litter bins provided, you can get fresh water, you can dispose of your grey waste, you can dis dispose of your toilet waste, whether there's toilets available, free Wi-Fi in some, you can even get electricity, whether dogs are allowed. And there's even also an important notice so if we look here, the important notice says, park at the rear of the car park, or entrance via a single track entrance road. There's just, well, I was gonna say hundreds, but there's actually 1,100. There's so many great places, highly recommended to have a look at it. Have a look at the website. I shall put the website link below. I am not affiliated with them anyway. I do not earn any commissions from it. It is just a standard link. If you don't wanna follow the link, just google britstops.com i think it is and have a look for yourself it is fantastic however i do have a giveaway i have got two books courtesy of britstops to provide to two of the watchers of this video so you can also enjoy what this is all about and it is fantastic so all you need to do you need to be a subscriber obviously like this video and drop a comment. You need to put a comment in the video to let me know where, if you had the book, if you could stay at any of these stops, where would you like to go? Where would you go first? What would be the first destination of your journey? If you feel like you know anybody else who'd be interested in, in this book or in the video itself, then please do share it with your friends. What I'll be doing is in a few weeks time, I'll be drawing two names at random from the comments and um, so make sure you do leave that comment i'll be drawing two randomly which i'll put up a video on instagram so do have a look at my instagram and the video will be on there and then that will be showing you how the two were selected and who the winners actually are if you found this video useful then you might be interested in a couple of my other videos here thanks for watching take care i shall see you soon